Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to efficiently process rasters that looks like this. Uh, you can see that over here we have quite a number of rasters and how to, how to process these rasters to in extract information for any number of stations that you might have. For example, you can see over here, we have around eight stations. So if you want to extract the information from each and every raster which I showed you and to finally save those time series data into CSV files like this extracted from each and every raster. You can stick with this tutorial because I'm going to explain the exact process that you would need to follow in order to do this in a much efficient way using Python, GeoPandas and a few other required geoprocessing libraries. So let's get started. So if you go into this climateserve.serviaglobal.net, this website, you can easily download a set of chirps rainfall data either by specifying a custom polygon to cover the region of interest, uh, uh, cover the area of your interest, or you can directly load a GeoJSON file to specify the area and then you can directly uh, do a bulk download of the raw chirps data. Now in, my, in the previous tutorial which I did, uh, I already did this so I'm not going to do it again. I'll just show you how it looks once I have finished downloading the different rainfall rasters. You can see over here the first raster is of uh, 2010, 1st of January, and it extends all the way up to the 2015th, uh, 31st of uh, December. So for each day we have a rainfall raster, and if I if you visualize this in a in a in a GIS software like QGIS. You can see that actually my area of uh, interest falls somewhere in in the in the Southeast Asian region, and this is one of the rasters that I have downloaded. You can see my area of interest over here, and how to interpret this raster? You can see actually a range of values over here, and you can see actually the gradient increases from zero, which corresponds to red, and all the way up to uh, dark blue. Now if I zoom in and if I select, go over here, the selection tool, and if I select one of the cells, and if I check the value, you see that the value over here is zero. Uh, similarly, if I check one of these dark blue values, you can see that the value is 34. And if I check another value, maybe this yellowish cell, you can see that the value is 21.6. So these values basically correspond to daily rainfall values recorded for this particular day. And that day is actually given by the heading of this, uh, by the title of this raster actually, uh, 19th of January. And similarly, we have actually uh, quite a few number of rasters for each corresponding day. For each day uh, to, from 2010 all the way up to 2015. And if you were to actually uh, extract the data, these ra daily rainfall data, and if you were to convert that into a time series, you can do that using the using the method I employed in the previous video, where you write an algorithm using the raster IO Python library, and for each iteration, you actually read each and every raster. You extract the raster value from the raster, which is actually the rainfall value, and you sort of uh, put it into a pandas data frame, and you save it as a, as a CSV file or something like that, and you can have a continuous time series. But let's say for a case that you have multiple number of stations. Now you see over here, I have actually around eight stations, and if you were to follow that algorithm where you read the rasters during each iteration for each station, that's going to take a lot of time. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a much faster way of doing it for multiple number of stations. Uh, in this case, what we do is, what's different from the previous method is that in this case, we will actually still read each and every raster just one time, but after that, everything that we read from each of these rasters, we will save it as arrays. For example, you can actually weave this raster as an array. Uh, with, with certain dimensions and that those dimensions will be equal to actually the number of cells in the vertical and the horizontal direction and you can actually extract the data uh, in terms of the raster values into a numpy array and you can show and, and you can save those numpy arrays corresponding to each and every day into a into a pandas data frame again there's a technique of doing that and later we can make another iteration which iterates through the x and y coordinates of each and every station 
and then instead of extracting the data again directly from the raw raster we can actually start extracting the data directly from the from the place where we stored those information into the memory into a variable and that technique is much faster than uh, than the previous technique which i so that you can do your extraction processes fully automatically just in a matter of uh, seconds or maybe in a matter of minutes so let's jump right ahead and see how to do this now if you've been following my tutorials for quite some time you know that the code editor which i would like to use is uh, spider so once you have installed spider you can navigate here from here to the place where you would actually like to work and once you're in the file explorer you can simply right click over here and start a new module to start a new project i'm going to name this as we need to have a couple of libraries imported uh, but so instead of importing all the libraries at the beginning I will actually import the libraries one by one when we need it so as viewers it'll be it'll, it'll be much clear for you actually what is the purpose of importing each of the library when I do it at the place where I really need to do it so so first I'm actually going to read in this shape file uh, if I open the QGIS file again you can see actually we have the stations in terms of a shape file so I'm going to actually read that shape file in which is located inside the shape file folder. And I can read that in using GeoPandas. So first I'm going to import GeoPandas as GPD. Alright, then you can run the command and see if you get any errors or not. As you can see, we ran the code without any issue. That means we imported the library without any problem. And now we can use the Ge GeoPandas module to simply uh, read in this shapefile using the read file option. So I'm going to create a new variable called stations. Read file. And over here, I'm going to specify the full file path. All right, now we can run this command and see how it looks. If you'd like to see this station's shapefile, how it looks, you can actually just simply plot it by, by typing station.plot. All right, now you can see that the station appear already. Now as the next step, if I also actually open this uh, geodata frame over here, you can see that now the shapefile consists of two columns. The first column is the name of the station, basically it's station 1 and 2, and the second column is the geometry column, which consists of the X and Y coordinate information. So I'm actually going to create two more columns, which corresponds to the latitude and the longitude, and I'm going to transfer the information of the latitude and the longitude from this geometry column into those respective cell, uh, into those respective columns. You can actually create a new column by just saying that station and here you specify the name that you would like to have for your new column. So um, I have specified it to be station uh, longitude, and that's going to be equal to station. And then we select the corresponding column. In this case, we select the geometry column. And from the geometry columns, the the longitude is going to be the x value. Right. Similarly, we can write the line of code for the for the latitude as well. And the latitude value is actually going to be the y value. So now let's run this one and see what happens. All right. Now you can see that we managed to extract the longitude and the latitude value uh, quite successfully into two new columns. Uh, I'll just put a comment over here so that it will be clear later on when you if you decide to follow along the tutorial. You can actually download all the tutorial files also. Uh, you can check the link to download the files uh, in the description below. Alright, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I will iterate through all the rasters and then I will save the data as individual arrays into, into a matrix. 
when I say that I'm going to iterate through all the rasters, what I mean is actually I'm going to sort of run through each and every raster over here, which corresponds to each and every uh, single day, starting from 2010 all the way up to 2015 over here. And I'm going to extract those values in terms of a array and save it. So let's see how we can do that. So the first step is actually to write the corresponding for loop. But now over here, since I need to actually uh, iterate through each and every file over here, I need to identify the name of the file using the OS library, which means when I iterate through, when I iterate through the elements of uh, of which consist inside this chirps rainfall rasters folder, I need the OS library to identify over which file I'm iterating through. So in order to do that, you can actually simply import the OS library too. So we will write the for loop now. OS dot list dir, and over here you can specify the the location of the directory where you where you save your raster print. Well, let's run and see what happens. All right, now you can see that it iterated through all of these rasters, and it actually sort of generated it printed out the name of the file. Now inside this folder. In my case, actually, we don't. I don't have anything other than the TIFF files. But in case if someone were to actually keep some other different types of files as well, so I actually want to do some kind of a small uh, where I only ch I check the last four characters of each and every file name inside over here, and if those four characters actually belongs to something other than .tif. Uh, then I will just skip over that file. I will only consider the file names which ends with .tif. So I can sim do that simply by using a, using an if, if statement. So that will be something like this. If file. And by specifying this negative four colon means we only specify the last four characters of the file names. Is equal to .tif. Uh, now that means we have actually all done all the cleansing of uh, sort of ignoring the files which are not TIFF files and then we actually have set the program to iterate through all of the TIFF files inside this folder. Now we can start actually asking the program to read in the files. Now if you were to actually read in rasters you're going to need another library called raster.io. So I'm going to import that, that library as well. Keep in mind that Installing this GeoPandas, this uh, Raster IO library has to be done separately, and I have already made tutorials for each and every uh, library which I which you need to install separately in my in my video series. So you can, if you haven't installed any of these libraries before, you can actually just uh, refer back to my my video series and try to find the uh, the tutorial file which I which I'm showing you how to actually quite quickly install these uh, these libraries. Or well, actually, I can put the link uh, down in the description below as well. Now I'm going to create a new variable called dataset, and I'm going to save these files, save the information from each of these rasters into a file called dataset. So my variable's name is actually going to be dataset, and that's going to be equal to raster.io. Open. Here we are going to open the open each and every raster, and to do that, you again have to specify the full path to the place where you keep the raster. Plus, double slash plus the the name of the file. In this case, the name of the file will be recorded to a, a variable called files. So I'm going to specify it over here, and later we can actually uh, extract and save this red information into into an array. So I'm going to create another variable called data array, and that's going to be equal to dataset dot read one. All right, now let's run and see what happens.
Now if you see over here that it's actually showing you that it's busy, which means it's actually running through each and every raster over here. So that's why it's that's why it's showing that it's taking some time because it's actually running through each and every uh, each and every raster and sort of saving the information into this uh, into this variable called data array. So right now it's not going to do anything because for each iteration it's just actually going to pass over over the files. So right now the information that's get, getting saved, I mean with this this particular snippet of code, the information that gets saved into this data array variable is just going to be the information which corresponds to probably the the last file that it reads. If you open, it's actually reading the files in, in its own order. So as you can see, the last file it read was actually 2015, February 9th. Uh, and you can actually open the data array and you can see that. Now what you see over here is basically what you saw before in the in this in, in, in terms of a raster as well. But corresponding to this particular date, which is the 2015-99, and these values, what you see is actually the values that you see, uh, that you that you will see if you were to actually open the raster in a GIS file, and these values correspond to the rainfall that it received on that particular day. I think the concept is uh, clear for you guys, and these regions with the uh, negative 9999 corresponds to the areas where data has not been retrieved. All right. And something important that you that you would need to notice over here is actually the size of this data array. You can see that it's actually a size of 60 by 60. So that means in the vertical direction you have 60, 60 grids and in the horizontal direction you have 60 grids as well. All right, so the next thing that I would do is actually I need, the next thing that I would do is actually I would just take this data array, uh, array that you see over here and then throw that into a SciPy coordinate matrix. We, it's commonly, it's commonly known as the COO matrix. It's actually it's actually given by a module which comes from the SciPy library, a module called Sparse. So I'm going to import that module as well now. So you can import SciPy.sparse as Sparse. And then I'm going to create a new variable called data array path. That's going to be equal to path dot c o o matrix. And what I'm going to transfer into a coordinate matrix is my data array over here. So that's data array. And then I have to specify the size of that. Right now we can run this one, and as you can see that it's again iterating through each and every each and every file over here, so it's going to take a bit of time. Right now you can see that it's done, and if I come over here and then if I just try to see what this data array path looks like, the number of elements which are stored in in the coordinate format, and if I just check the type of this variable. You can see that it belongs to the type of sparse coordinate matrix. I will create a new variable called date. I need to keep track of the date that actually, whenever the iteration happens, I would like to know uh, which date it's actually passing over. So I need to keep track of this. So I'm just going to create a new variable called date, and that's going to be file. All right, when you actually specify this to be colon and negative four, it's actually taking, uh, if, I, if I go over here, it's actually taking everything that's behind the, the last four characters. So that's actually going to be the elements of our date. For example, in this case, it's going to take 2010-1-18 as the date value over here. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to create an empty matrix uh, this matrix will be in the form of a pandas data frame and each and every 
sparse arrays that we obtain from here through each iteration, I'm actually just going to throw it into this uh, matrix, this pandas data frame. Uh, and that's the one that we are going to actually access later when we, whenever we try to extract information uh, corresponding to each coordinate. So we can do that simply by creating an empty matrix over here. So I can actually do that empty matrix creation over here. Uh, I'm going to name it as matrix. It's going to be td dot data frame. And the matrix value, I'm just going to not pass any argument. And in the same time, you see that this PD is not recognized over here because normally we import pandas as PD, PD and we have to import pandas library in the meantime as well. All right, now we'll run the code and see what happens. As you can see that it's iterating all through each of each and every raster again. And I just want to show you how this matrix pandas data frame looks. As you can see over here, it's actually a completely empty matrix, but it's a pandas uh, data frame. Uh, that's what's most important over here because later we are going to throw in each and every uh, these pass arrays into this matrix, but with the heading of each and every date that it actually runs over. That's that's the reason why I why I'm extracting the date over here in in to, in, in the form of a string because I'm going to create one column for each date and I'm going to sort of throw in this pass matrix under that particular date. So we can do that by simply passing an argument like this. So as you know that in order to create a new column in a, in a, in a pandas data frame, you can just specify something like metric, the name of the data frame, and then you specify the name of the column over here, but over here you can see the name of the column gets recorded into a variable called data. So that's why I'm going to specify over here at data. So in each iteration, my name of the column is going to be different. I think you get the idea over here. And that's going to be equal to data array sparse to array. Let's run this once again and see what happens. Or maybe we can actually put another argument, something like print, for us to see actually which file is processing at that current moment. Pro processing is done for the raster. Right, this will show you over which raster is actually uh, running at that particular time. All right, looks fine to me. Now we can run and see what happens. F5. Okay, we get a small error. Let's try to figure out what happened. Okay, here it should be plus nine. All right, F5. Processing at each iteration. Right now it's done. I would say that this was probably the most complex part of this whole tutorial. The rest is going to be quite easy to understand. And now if I open this matrix, now you can see how it looks. Actually, it's lagging a little bit because, because of the amount of data that this thing consists. But I think you get the idea. You can see that now each column has its own raster values uh, sort of saved into this. And if I scroll this one actually it's going to go all the way on, up until 2015 uh, 31st of December all right now the next thing that I would do is I get the corresponding uh, row and column for for the related XY coordinate so we can do that by simply running a for loop again for index row in station Station name is actually going to be the row. Now, if I open the geodata frame corresponding to these stations, 
you can see that during each iteration if you want to extract the name of the station you actually have to give the name uh, of the column in this case actually the name of the column is also an also name so I'm just going to pass that argument over here and in the meantime I need to make sure that this final output of this part is actually a string so in any case just to be on the safe side I'm just going to convert that Alright, so similarly, I'm also going to create two more variables for longitude and latitude. So in case of uh, longitude, similarly, I'm going to extract it from the row, but now the column name is lon, and this data type need to be float. And now, based on the index, we can actually extract what is the value of the row and the column uh, based on this given x and y. So we can create another variable called row and column, and that's going to be equal to dataset dot index, and we specify the index to be the longitude and the latitude. So basically, it's going to be x and y. In this time, I'm actually going to print something like processing I also want to know actually what is the station name over here run the code and see what happens all right now you can see that the data extraction was actually very fast extremely fast uh, over here you can see that it passed over all the eight stations what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pick the rainfall value from each stored raster array and record it into the previously created table. So let's actually put a comment over here and specify what we are going to do. Well, in this case, it's supposed to be. All right. So similarly over here. previously created table. Actually, I think we skipped over the part where we need to create a table. So I'm also actually going to create a, a table, an, an, an empty table, something like this. We I will do it over here. Right, this is going to be an empty pandas data frame. I'm going to call it as table. That's going to be equal to pd dot data frame, and the index. I'm going to specify the index to be index to be a numpy array. Uh, so if you actually if you if you need to use the numpy arrays, if you need to use the numpy arrays, actually you need to import the numpy library. So I'm going to import it as np, and I'll tell you in a minute uh, why we are going to actually uh, create this table. And I'm going to create something that looks like np dot arrange zero comma one. So later, the values that we extract from this matrix, this this variable, which actually actually stores all the information of all the rasters, uh, we are going to sort of do a bit of a transformation and then save those information into this empty table. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to actually run another uh, for loop. All right, so the meaning of this first line is that this is the name of the variable that I'm assigning. So now I'm, uh, now I'm going to iterate through all the uh, columns of the matrix and it's better to put the columns of the matrix actually into a list directly over here now if I put matrix dot columns and to list actually what it does is it's opening this matrix uh, data frame it's picking up the columns all the headings of the columns and then putting that into a list so what we are iterating over over here is actually the the list of the dates 
and that's why I have specified the variable to be the name of the rec uh, records date basically the specification of the date all right now I'm going to create a, a variable called a and that's going to be equal to metric record date all right now you can you can assume that when we are iterating through through this loop uh, if I specify the metrics and then within square brackets the records date you can from here you can see that actually it's iterating through each and every date basically it's iterating through these items and in each iteration what it's going to save into this a variable is actually the the metrics that corresponds to that particular date so in the second iteration it's actually jumping to the second date and in the third iteration it's jumping to the next date and basically it's saving that particular array into into this a variable and now we're going to pick the rainfall value and the rainfall value is actually going to be a dot location of the row we need the row to be an integer value and then the column all right so without going into the further steps maybe we will run this command and see what happens what we can see now you can see that when we run this it's actually running through all of these steps that's why we see it's uh, sort of recording the data again from the rasters but since this is a tutorial uh, I think it's fine if not you can basically isolate the parts that you don't need to run again and again but since you're doing this for the learning purpose I think it's still fine to do this so if I just open this uh, variable called rainfall value now if I open this metro uh, a variable maybe let's see how how that looks you can see that this tw uh, 202599 is actually the last date that the iteration picked up and these are the corresponding information actually uh, pertaining to that last date so if I expand this a bit yeah it looks a bit messy but what you see over here is actually so these are the raster values that you see but this is the index what you need to understand is actually you have the rows over here and you can see the columns over here this is the this is the zeroth column this is the first column this is the second column this is the third column so you can see actually the formatting is not very clear as if uh, as we would like it to be but uh, you, you basically get the idea so we what we do over here is we if we open this rf value in this case let's find out what was the row and the column so you can see that the row was 39 and the column was 4 so and as you might guess this row and column is actually corresponding to the final station that it processed so for example for this station number 8 the row and the column was for uh, 39 and 4 and the rainfall values corresponding to that 39 and 4 was 25.96 so that's basically the way to interpret this uh, this result I think it can be a bit confusing but uh, if you spend a little time to actually understand the code line by line with, with the explanation that I'm giving I think uh, just in no time you'll be able to understand All right next what we do is actually we are going to create a new column in this empty table that we created you see over here we actually created a an empty uh, pandas data frame and right now there's nothing in it so I'm actually going to going to create a new column table and each time during each iteration I'm asking to create the create a new column with the where the column heading happens to be the records date since I want to show you what happens over here I'll run this code again and probably this time I'll just fast forward it alright now let's open this table data frame and see how it looks okay now you can see that for the last iteration that it did that's basically for station number eight it managed to extract the rainfall values and then sort of throw it into this uh, table because over here we specified column to be the records date so each time it iterated you can see that it actually created a new column and since it picked the corresponding rainfall value it actually recorded that corresponding rainfall value inside the new column that it generated so I 
as you can now see that we have almost come to the final part of the tutorial now i think it would be actually good to sort of uh, get a, get the get this matrix transposed so that we can have this as a as a as a vertical column so that transposing is actually not that hard to do you can do it simply with one command maybe i'll create a new variable called transpose matrix that's equal to the table but now that's specified by this dot t and i would also actually like to do some renaming uh, for the columns maybe we can do something like this dot rename if i open this one you can see that one gets transposed this index 0 is going to be actually the heading over here it means the the column name over here. So I'm just going to change that zero and replace it by a string rainfall because these values are in millimeters, so I'll specify it like that. So finally, what I would like to do is actually to save the created and I would like to save the files actually in terms of the name of the station so that finally our final product will have uh, eight time series files, maybe eight CSV files, uh, which corresponds to the extracted time series of those eight stations. So we can do that simply. Now we get out from this loop because we need to create that, uh, we need to create that, that time series for each and every station. So we can create something like transports, and now we specify where you would like to save this one. Maybe I'll create a new folder. I think that would be easier. Maybe over here I'll create a new folder called uh, time series data double backslash. And over here specify the station name. All right. So. We can run this whole script and see now what happens. Maybe I will open this one. So while it while it's running, probably you might see that if we don't get any errors, it'll actually uh, create the create the anticipated files as well. Now you can see that it's actually reading all the information from the rasters again, trying to save it into the into the data frame that we created. And now you see that it's actually iterating through each and every stations. So you can see actually once the station one is done, it got created over here, station two as well, station three as well, station four, station five, station six, station seven, and finally station eight, and the script is done. So if I open the station one, Well, this is how it's supposed to look. So you have the date column over here and you have the rainfall values extracted in the form of a time series. And again, if you need to actually do a simple sorting, you can even sort it directly from here. Oldest to newest. All right, now you can see that the last date is probably yes, 31st of uh, December, 2015. And now I can actually simply do a plotting to visualize these kind of steps. Actually, when you can do it in Python itself, but since we saved the file to be a CSV file, just showing you what what are the capabilities now we have with the final product. All right, now you can see. Well, you can clearly see actually the 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 rainfall, the seasonal rainfall fluctuations as well. And the same thing you can actually do with the other stations as well. For example, if I open for station 8, you can see that over here we have the data for station 8. So similarly, any number of stations that you would like, actually you can extract the data from these rasters. And just keep in mind that you can do this on not only for rainfall data, but any other raster types that you might have. You might have to amend the code, uh, maybe not majorly, but then 
you might have to do some slight modifications but if you understand the script I think doing those modifications might not be that hard but now this actually gives us ability to extract the information in terms of uh, extract the information to a time series for any number of stations in a fully automatic way so that concludes the tutorial for today I, I hope you learned something if you did uh, you can comment the, comment it down below just to express that which parts that you actually learned uh, as new information or if you can actually also extend your support by just putting a comment or hitting the like button and uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel to actually uh, to be informed about uh, us publishing these kind of very cool uh, tutorials geoprocessing tutorials uh, using geopandas and python and uh, other associated libraries so that concludes the tutorial for today thanks a lot for watching again and uh, i'll see you in the next one